Hey guys, Troy here with hopefully another interesting pen mail day. Uh, got a couple of days, two or three days worth to, to show you here uh, that I have here in front of me. Uh, I want to start with uh, something that came in a while back. I just never really brought, brought it out and showed it to you. I was uh, looking around and I actually found a necktie. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. You know, I don't wear ties a lot anymore. I used to have to wear one at a job every day and used to have to wear one at a church I had attended, uh, but uh, I rarely wear a necktie nowadays, but I figured, why not? This is kind of neat looking. I mean, a fountain pen tie? Cool. So I just snatched that up uh, from uh, a seller on Etsy, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. All right, uh, next up, wanted to share with you uh, an Anderson Pens purchase that I had snatched up. Uh, let's see. No, not the pen. Actually, uh, I was able to snatch up a nib. Uh, I've gone to all broad nibs for me personally on Estherbrooks. Having used uh, all kinds of different nibs, I found that uh, broad nibs are really more my style uh, when it comes to these old uh, Renew Point Estherbrook nibs. I've got a bunch of fine nibs, extra fine nibs, medium nibs, uh, and I found that. I like their broad for some reason, so I ordered yet another broad nib and I swapped it out in another one of my uh, Estherbrooks. And so the one that I just uh, took out of an old Esty will end up probably finding itself a new home eventually. Uh, also, I picked up from Anderson since I was placing an order. Uh, one of the things about Anderson pens, you order over $50 worth, you get free shipping. So I threw in, uh, I still can't find my old Platinum Preppy somewhere in the house. So I just went ahead and ordered another one for about five bucks. Uh, this one I was able to get the medium nib and uh, you know got it in blue. It, it didn't really matter to me what color. I just picked one at random for the color. But I figured let's get a medium nib this time because I like the way the medium wrote better than the fine did anyway. Um, so eventually I'll find my fine nibbed platinum preppy. But there we go. So that was another purchase from them. Uh, I have a smoothing kit that I use. I just picked up a couple more of these buff sticks uh, that are micro mesh, essentially to help smooth out some nibs. I actually got a lot of use out of uh, my smoothing kit the past couple of days. Uh, one of the things that I had purchased from them that I was able to smooth out was this one. This was my pen of the day uh, yesterday. It is from Eclipse. It is a vintage fountain pen. You do not see a lever. That is because it is uh, a button filler. Now, this particular one, it's it's old, it's beat up, and I paid accordingly for it. I kept seeing it for sale on their website. I mean, month after month after month, it sat there. It's a very dark green. I've got some Eclipse pens here in my collection that are not horrible. I've got some that are just eh, okay, but uh, this one here, the the blind cap does not stay on very well. It's, uh, I guess, the, the threads on the back end are starting to strip out some, so it doesn't hold on real tight, but it will just kind of hold on. And this is the button. And I tell you what, I do not look forward to cleaning this pen. This is the stiffest button I have ever had to use on a button filler. It is hard to press. Uh, that spring that is holding that is extremely strong and tight, uh, and I had to work at it quite a bit. Uh, so you've got, it's called the hooded knight. Well, you've got kind of a torpedo shape here for the cap, and you've got a very wide cap band. You unscrew it, and you have a semi-hooded nib. I can tell you that I fought with this nib quite a bit, because when I first got it, um, it was just a little scratchy just a little bit. It does have some writing here, some writing here. I'll give you close-up shots of those. Uh, but uh, back to that nib. Um, I fought with it quite a bit. I went to go work on it and the time alignment was just a hair off. But when I touched the time alignment, it really put it way out of whack. So I kept fighting with it to try to get it back. Um, and then I would try to smooth it out some and I'd lose time alignment again on it. So this steel nib was a little tough to work with. Uh, at least I think it's a steel nib. Um, it may not be. It may, but anyway, I fought with this nib and I fought with it. I finally got it back into proper shape and writing, and it writes a whole lot better than it once did. Maybe I'll give you a writing sample, uh, and 
you can see what that was like. So it's not too bad now. I mean, it's it's acceptable to me. It's not fantastic. Uh, it is acceptable. Uh, and that was a majority of what I bought uh, from Anderson Pens. Another pen I picked up, um, the, the seller was in Romania. Uh, okay. Uh, I got it uh, at an okay price, and it said it was a Waterman W5. Mm, okay. Well, all the W5s I've seen have been lever fillers, but I figured I'd go ahead and order it anyway. So you've got a metal cap. It's not a real highly constructed, high-quality construction. There's a very faint imprint still left, left on this barrel. It's kind of scuffed up. Um, but it does say Waterman. It does say Waterman here on the, the cap as well. It is a hooded nib. I can tell you all the hooded nibs that I've run across uh, from Waterman like this have not been real impressed. Uh, I've got one that I literally broke the nib itself and trying to, to work on it some. Uh, and another one that I bought, it just really didn't write well. So this is my third one and it's supposedly it's a cartridge converter pen down inside you can see that right there it looks like there's some brown stuff inside that little stem I have not been able to find any information yet on this particular pen all the, dub, the W5 information I find is for a lever filler but uh, this is a cartridge converter pen I would suspect that it would take a Waterman CF cartridge I haven't played with it just yet. I just kind of put it in my drawer for a while and left it alone. So I'll play with this one uh, after a while. But it is uh, my latest, one of my latest Waterman pen purchases. All right, let's go to um, another pen that I, or package that I received from Birmingham Pens. One of the things with Birmingham Pens out of uh, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh area, I've ordered for them from them quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I, they always put a handwritten note, but they were having a sale on nibs. And I got to thinking, you know, why not? Um, I, can, I can actually use some nibs. Uh, when you get a Yovo nib, even though it says Nemesine on, or maybe some Knox nibs that are out there, but when I see that you've got a fountain pen nib, medium gold-plated nib for $7.50 manufactured by Yovo, I said, why not? So I picked a half a dozen of those. A medium polished steel, number five, number six nibs. There's a number five, number five, number six, number six nib. So I think I picked up a total of like seven nibs. So why not, you know? Um, Two, two number fives, two number sixes and polished. I picked up a .8 stub, one broad nib. So, what the heck. And then to round it out, I went ahead and ordered a uh, an, another Knox pen, a Plato. I've got a Plato. Matter of fact, I do believe it is this exact color. But one of the cool things, for the, about the same price, because they're trying to clear them out and get rid of them, um, you can get one with like the same kind of beautiful uh, good writing nib manufactured by Yovo uh, for seven bucks so it was actually cheaper to get the entire pen with a nib in it and I figure I'll have this one for giveaway eventually and but like I said I've got one I've got a couple of them here in the drawer several of them and it's a good weighty pen good quality I like the way it writes and for like seven bucks I may go back and buy some more and just so I can stock up and have them on hand for either giveaway, replacements, whatever. So I got a bunch of nibs. So that's my latest Birmingham pens purchase. And then an Amazon package uh, arrived today. Waterman pens. Look at this. I was looking for some more converters for Waterman. And so I ordered what I thought was going to be one. And I got an entire bag full. So made for Waterman. Why not? Um, I do, do not believe that these are OEM, original manufacturer, but I don't really care. As long as they fit my Waterman pens and they work fine. This is a second bag of these uh, that I've had to procure in addition to a few singles here or there. But I figured, why not? Now, one of the interesting things is while I was ordering this, because along uh, like the idea of Birmingham pens and along the same idea as you would find uh, with Anderson pens, you get over and 
With Amazon, $25, uh, you get free shipping. So I picked up one of these right here. This is another Waterman's pen, uh, and this one is a graduate. Not one of their top-end pens, uh, but it is one of their lower-end pens, and it does come with a box. Should look familiar if anybody had seen one of my recent Waterman videos. Um, and the graduate is basically a stainless steel body. It's a rugged pen. It's not going to get hurt at all. It is a fine nib that comes on these. They don't write fantastically well. Um, but they don't write awesome. They don't write horrible either. But it came, in, in this case, with a cartridge already in it. And what I'm going to do is, I bought this one actually several dollars cheaper as a used model rather than as, uh, as like new. Okay, it was uh, fulfilled by Amazon Warehouse. So I figured, what the heck, I've got some guarantees on it. If it sucks, I can always return it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and probably clean this up. I already have one of these, a Waterman Graduate, so I don't need another one. Actually looks identical to this one. And I'm going to gift this one way or another probably to somebody. Like I said, it's not a horrific pen. It's not a fantastic pen, not their top end. It is one of their low-end pens aimed at students. Uh, so I don't know if my son is going to get this one or if I'm just going to give it away here on my channel. I don't know. But got another pen. Interesting uh, thing that I found too is while I was look, poking around on Amazon, you know, Amazon Basics is their house brand. Amazon has made their own brands of, oh, stuff like uh, printer paper and office supplies. So Amazon Basics, they actually have their own fountain pen now that they have manufactured for them uh, and basically put their Amazon name on it. So, refillable fountain pen, medium point black ink. I said, okay, why not? You know, for what, 11 to $13, I don't remember which, but it's, it was not expensive. I figured it's probably a Chinese made pen branded for them. So I figured, let's go, just go ahead and give it a shot and we'll see the, um, what kind of quality that I'm gonna get uh, on the low end from Amazon for a fountain pen. I kind of I had in mind basically Jinhao is kind of what I had in mind. So you open it up and you've got a Amazon Basics refillable fountain pen. So you got an instruction manual. You've got the pen itself, which is basically a black lacquered metal. It's all metal. Then you got the Amazon Basics logo or branding right there on the clip. You open it up, and you've got a steel nib, nothing special, didn't expect it to be anything special. It came with one cartridge in the barrel, just sitting there. It's all metal construction, and they have their own branded ink cartridges as well with the Amazon logo on those. So I don't know if I'm going to use their Amazon uh, ink cartridge or not, because I do have plenty of ink converters. I suspect this is a... Uh, Standard International, I'll find out how well it writes. And it came with two more cartridges here. So it came with three cartridges uh, on the Amazon Basics fountain pen. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Ran across it while I was shopping on Amazon for fountain pen supplies and materials. So what the heck? I did buy a desk pen that came uh, just yesterday. And it is a, a fountain pen that I was able to take apart I was able to put a new sack on it, try to polish it up. I mean, it's beaten up pretty bad on this tail. It's got a lot of, looks like bite marks uh, here that somebody was munching on it. It is unbranded. There is no real brand on this uh, pen whatsoever, uh, but there is some writing there on the clip. I'll give you a close up of that. There's no branding on this nib whatsoever. It is a semi hooded nib. And I think I picked this up for like five or six dollars. I figured why not? I don't mind desk pens. It's kind of interesting because the tail section just comes right off, screws off. It's got a band that comes off, and I was able to get that apart and polished up. It does have a J bar in there, so you're not going to see a whole lot in there, but you can see the back end of that J bar uh, that is there for uh, the pressure bar that will depress that ink sac. The downside to this pen is I got it working, I got it uh, you know, inked up, uh, nicely fixed up, polished it up, and I test wrote with it, and it wrote well. And then I let it sit for a little bit, 
uh, you know, just put it down and went to pick it up again and go write a letter to a pen pal of mine, and it would not write. I could get it to just barely start, uh, and then it would stop. So I was very frustrated with it. Here's the back of that. Uh, see, this is this. Is, it would start and then stop. So well, maybe I've got it finally going again. That was just the back of the Birmingham Pens receipt. So anyway, uh, <laughs> hey, it's working better now than it did yesterday afternoon or late yesterday morning after I had restored the thing. Uh, so rather than go get my uh, Rhodia dot pad that I had out, let's just go ahead and play with it since I got this out here now as well. So this uh, is the Eclipse Hooded Knight. See, it's a, it sounds, I got a little bit of feedback because this is actually kind of a rough paper. It's not a smooth paper at all. But I can tell you, this pen does write a whole lot better than it did when it came out of the box. And it writes fairly wet, too. This paper is uh, mighty absorbent, though. But the Eclipse Hooded Knight, I thought, uh, I was actually impressed with how I got it to write after I was able to get it up and running. So there you go. Um, I won't whip out the Rhodia dot pad. The heck with it. I'll just use the back of that uh, Birmingham pens thing uh, as my writing sample. So there you go, guys. Um, this is uh, my fruitful uh, pen mail day. Uh, actually, uh, two, three days all put together. Uh, but the tie came in like a week or two ago. I just kept forgetting to throw, throw it out there and show it to you. All right, guys. That's about it. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask. I have an upcoming Q&A video. I've got a great big old stack of questions. Actually, um, great big old stack full of questions that you guys have been asking here lately. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys are great.